distracted oh, okay. yeah. in the middle of it. And gotcha. I've since resolved some of my problems. But I wanted, I gotcha. I wanted a review. Well, I, think, I don't think I've heard half of what happened. That was on the December too. Like, I don't think I remember half of what was said because there's a lot going on. I guess you guys just put your name on there so we can keep track of who came to it. Oh, Mike's on here. Huh? Mike. Hi, Mike. Oh, hey, Mike. Is it working? Yeah, it's on. I just need to sign into mine to get to the I had PowerPoint, the PowerPoint up already in my email. I changed like some oh, wording. Changed. Yeah, I changed some wording. We could have just put your computer on there if you wanted. It's okay. Just don't. Um, so you are don't find my credit card password yeah. because I'm already poor enough. Amazon, here I go. <laughs> <laughs> That's, uh, okay. Let me go get that big high chair. Yeah. Who do you know? Would that help you? No. I knew Chris Manis that works in the Yeah, I've known him forever. He used to work at our restaurant. My late okay. husband. Okay. And he was Side. one of our like, long term people and he. That's, like that's that. not what I clicked. Oh I didn't click that button. Yeah, I didn't. I don't know what just happened because I did not click that button. Yeah. And it took... that? No, I've got it. Yes, I've got it. Yeah, it's actually just here. We go. Him Thursday. We have a big chamber of commerce. Hey, Michelle's on here. Okay. Okay. What you're doing? Yes. Hi. Why are you making fun of me? <laughs> okay. Wow. Cool. Fixed. Let's move all of our people somewhere. They're down at the it can be. I have something going on on Friday. Is this a? Oh, it's a sharing. I'll be glad. Well, it's all something I need to have done. Don't make it easier. Recorded. We can look back at it. Are you recording? It should be. It should be. Okay. Yeah, I think it. Yeah, does. it starts recording automatically. Okay. okay. All right. All right. Hi guys, welcome to compliance. Um, we are going over the changes because y'all had to sign a new compliance policy. So Mac and I are just going to kind of talk you guys through that. We shouldn't be here more than like a half of an hour, but um, we're going to show you a couple of things, how we see it on our back end, and why it's important that we change the policy. So, what is compliance, Mr. Broker? Take it away. All right. So. Um... I'm going to start off first. Did you all see the email that came out about 525? Yes. Okay. All right. I won't get into it then, unless you have any questions before we start. I have a million, but I know they can't be answered. What? So I will be quiet. <laughs> yeah, I was the same. I don't have any questions. Okay. Let's see. So, so Mike, I tell you what, um, after we're done, I'll answer whatever questions you have about it. Okay. All right, so uh, brokers have regulations about compliance and when uh, about contracts and you know keeping them for three years and they have to have all the initials, all the signatures. RVAR has standards on filling out forms, what information has to be on there, what doesn't have to be on there. Keller Williams, RVAR, we all have policies. There's uh, there's laws, there's requirements, there's rules, like everything else that we have, and it all comes up to be compliance. Uh, so you all have probably received messages on the little bell inside command where all the notifications are that you're missing an initial, a signature, you're missing a disclosure in here, it's in the wrong place, it's whatever, whatever the comment is. Do you, does everybody know where to look for those? Okay. All right. So yeah, so all of those things equal compliance. They all pour into that compliance bucket. And um you know, every every year there's changes in one or the others of these, whether it's our contracts, ways you have to do things. So as a broker, we have to keep keep up with those things. And I've got a lot of reading to do. <laughs> yeah. So that's where we are with that. All right. <laughs> so where do you find your compliance? So as Mac talked to you about when you ever when you get notifications in command, if you have the app on your phone, you can get a push notification to your phone. You should also get an email from KW Command about your compliance, and you'll also get a little notification in your notification bell in command. But where do you actually find compliance to put everything in? So that's in your opportunity. And if you don't know that, you need to come sit with me urgently. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so um, you find your compliance by going to your opportunities, and you can see your pipelines here. So wherever you have um, and under contract, 
that's where you're going to start putting in your compliance. So we want you to start with compliance as soon as you have something signed and ratified being an exclusive right, whether that's buyer or seller. So the second you have something signed, ratified, ready to go, it has to go in command under opportunities here. How many days do you think you have from the from the latest time stamped signature or on the document that you're having signed? How many days do you have to get it in the compliance? Three days. Five. Five days. <laughs> Don't tell me that. I have three business days. Business day. <laughs> you have three days. Yeah, three days would be fantastic. Okay. So five days. Okay. Is it days or business day? days? Days. Okay. Is it? I thought it was business. Oh. Well, I don't know. Amber said both before. He's law. So, yeah. He's law. Whatever. Just he's it's five days regardless. If you can get in there, I mean, if you can't get in there five days, I mean, you need a transaction coordinator probably. You're, you're probably just too busy and you need to have some kind of admin help. So how do you actually submit your compliance? So when you do open up an opportunity, it's going to look like this. You're going to go to your documents and then you are going to upload your documents in the appropriate place. Second you upload it, it's going to change your status on your document to open. Now, if you see open, that does not mean it's submitted for compliance. Okay, You can't just upload documents and say, all right, they're on command. I'm good to go. We can't see them. You have to send them to us. So once you see that big um, submit to MC button go green, it'll be gray until you actually put something in command. Once it goes green, make sure you're hitting that button, but do it after you've uploaded every document that needs to go in there, not before, because then you're going to be submitting it over and over and over again. So if you have yeah. multiple documents, put all of them in command first and then hit submit, but you have to hit submit. <laughs> Yep. So I have a question. Yes. We're supposed to do this as soon as we have everything signed. Mm -hmm. So if we're just starting to work with the buyer and we have a signed right to represent, yes. does that need yes. to go into compliance? But because then there's going to be other documents later, well, is it okay to submit it? See this consultation <laughs> oh, here? Oh, I gotcha. Okay. Yeah. So this, this is exactly only right. your your right to represent. That's really about the only thing that's going in here. There may be a W-9 if it's a referral. Mm -hmm. So or just go ahead and get that one in there because your other documents will go in your other contract. Under contract. And then there is also a section for closed documents. You're only going to be opening up the closed section or submitting anything under there. It's not actually closed. It's more like if there's any addendums, removals of contingency repair requests. If you don't have anything under there, cash buyer, no inspections, no repairs, you don't really have to worry about the closed tab. There is something in there that says the settlement statement is required. You are not required to upload the settlement statement at all. We get the check-in with the signed and ratified settlement statement by both parties. And then I actually upload the settlement statement under the opportunity. So if you're looking at closed and it says required settlement statement, ignore it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And again, this tab is for all the documents that are required for you to be actually ratified with that transaction. All the disclosures. Anything that comes out after the facts, addendums that all go in the closed tab. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Gotcha. Let's think of it this way. Well, we're under contract. Here's all those required docs. Now, okay, what else needs to go in here to make it closed down the road? I need all the other, the EMB, copy, those things that can all go in there. But you still, there's a five day, just the five days for this. Okay. That's a confusing tab. It should yeah. be under ratification or. Yeah. yeah. It's, um, we need to upload inspection. Inspection reports? Yeah. No. No. Okay. no. Yeah. Not even your termite report. I see them in there sometimes. Some people will. It's not a requirement. Yeah, there's a way. I mean, you can use that as your document storage. Right. You can. Yeah. yeah, it's not a requirement. It doesn't hurt, but it's sure. not required. It's yeah. not going to affect your compliance if you don't. Right. Um, so the importance of approval. We cannot pay you until you see this shiny green approved. Okay, so after you submit it, it goes to Mac to look at. He will look over all of the documents, make sure all signatures, initials, and appropriate documents are included in command. And if it's good to go, he will approve them. And he does that by tap. So your and application you. will get approved. Your under contract will get approved. If you put anything in closed, that'll get approved. If all three of these things or two of these things, if you don't have anything closed or not approved, you will not get paid. Do not expect to get paid until that says approved. This is one of the reasons why the five days is important. If you, when we have agents that are still doing it, if you're waiting, if you're, you show up to closing and then you come back to your office, you're like, all right, well, I'm going to go in here and start uploading some stuff. Well, if I have 60 
compliance requests, I'm going from the oldest to the newest ones ever submitted. If it takes me six days to get there, you're not getting paid for six days, right? So I'm approving them every day on my calendar. It's, it's a X amount of day per day I'm going in. I'm working on compliance, trying to keep up with it so that there's not but maybe 48 hours from the time you submit it to the time I'm looking at either approving or denying. Um, but if you're waiting to the last day, oh, man, I mean, it, it might be if I'm on vacation or if we're, who knows the reason, right? Well, I, I want you to get paid quickly. And the worst thing is, is if you go and submit these things and it's not approved before your check comes in, now all of a sudden you've closed and you're missing signatures or initials Nittles. or entire documents. Yeah. And how willing is a buyer or seller to actually sign something after they've already handed over the keys? They've seen enough. They're, they're tired of seeing documents. They're done. And then we're on the hook. We're on the line. Yeah. What you guys don't know is that we can get audited and audits aren't something where it's like, oh, well, you know, one person did something wrong and now they're going to pull random documents from everybody just yeah. to make sure that we're following through that's simply how it happens yeah. something pops up to uh, in front of the board that there was something maybe something goes in front of the board that's being challenged with us that we've missed a signature and now somebody tried to get out of a deal or want their emp back and it's once that comes to the light of the board that well you know there's they got a williams had some documents missing some stuff well you know what maybe it's time for an audit over there and that's when it snowball rolls downhill. Matt, did you have a question? I did. Um, how you were saying that it might take you a couple of days to get to one, if you have like massive blocks of right. documents. Sure. But let's say we submit them within that time frame. Yeah. But you don't get to it. I, I can see the time you, you submitted it. So, so what I do is I look at the date. I look at the last date of the timestamp signature the, on the document that you put in there. Then I can see when you submitted it in command. As long as you're in that five day window, it doesn't you know, matter. Nah. As long as we get it. As long as you get yeah. it. There, right? Okay. right. Yep. Good question. So, Matt, All right. so I'm going to show, show you. you. <laughs> I'm going to show you the back end of this <laughs> if I can figure out how to. No. So, how do I look, get this screen smaller? No, just tell me how to do it. I'll never learn if you keep doing so it. So, hit me. escape. Here All you right. go. All right. All right. All right. Yeah. I got to move this little bar up here. Yeah. And then, yeah. Oh, oh, wait. I had it all up here. Where'd it go? It just, yeah. There it is. There all right. It's right here. I got it. I got it. I got okay. it. All right. So I brought this up. So when I go into compliance, this is what it looks like. This is real time. This is what's in here. So right now, there's 38 requests for compliance. Now I've got this down to the 27th. So those are the, that's the dates that I'm, I'm going in there because as of the email today, I've got all these to do, right? Oh, oh, save the chocolate. Yeah. All right. So I'll go in and I'm going to just show you. So I'm going to look at Mike Belcher's here. Mike doesn't mind. He's on here. Um, so this is what pops up. So I'm looking at the console here. This is his initial right to represent the buyer. I just I click on the documents. I just go through. I'm looking at, okay, so it's between one person. I'm just going through, making sure he's got. Um, the right fields filled in, uh, right initials in there. So this is a big one that's missed right here. Electronic signatures, it's the agent and the clients that go here, okay? And then I look, okay, both signatures are on there. It's all good. The last two don't require anything. And then I hit approve. And I go up here and I hit approve. And that's where you see you're approved, right? So that's really all he's going to put in this, in the console part, unless he's got a referral from an agent. And then that's where the referral form will go and the W-9 will go. All right, so then I'll go to the under contract and I do the exact same thing with all of his documents he's put in here. Uh, so, you know, I'll open up the contract. The first things I'm looking for um, are the admin things at the top. Make sure that these, um, so right here, you said both seller and purchaser, both seller and purchaser. He's got Fraser and Michael. That's another one that's missed a lot is this one here. They'll, they'll still check purchaser and seller. Um, I know there's two people involved in the transaction. I know there's three disclosures that are going to be involved. So when I'm going through here, um, I'm not going to finish with this one here. But um, when I'm going through, I'm going to go in here and say, well, there's this designated agency document, septic, uh, lead base, residential. And then he's got an earnest money down here, which, I mean, that's fine. He can go there. 
and then a contracts page. There's some other stuff in here. So I'll go through and look at them all. And if they're all approved, I hit approved. If they're not, I'll go in here and hit returns. And I might go here and make a little comment. When I make that comment, that's what pops up in your notifications. So then you'll just make whatever adjustment you need to make in that document. Then I'll go back. You'll resubmit it back in. I'll go back in and approve it. So that's really the back end of this um, on what we see on the broker side. Uh, so I just, I just, I like to show people the whys and what we're seeing and why it's important on us. But as you can see, I mean, there's, I got, this was 50 an hour ago before you guys came in. So I got it down to 38 in an hour. So you can imagine the time it's going to take to do this, um, which is fine. I mean, that's the job, right? But um, as you guys get them in, it's, it's just easier to get them in in a timely manner. That's all. Another thing to note about command, once you guys hit that submit to MC button, you cannot delete any documents, okay? Once you hit submit, you can only change documents. You can't delete. So make sure everything is in the correct place and that it, you know, is what it needs to be. Because if it's not in the right place and you're like, oh, well, I put that in the wrong place and now I got to get rid of it, but you've already submitted it, you cannot delete that document at all. You can only replace documents after you hit submit. So be very cognizant of what you're uploading, where it's going, and before you hit submit, make sure everything's right. You know, now, another thing I'm seeing is uh, the rat the purchase agreement. So I'm seeing, we're seeing agents that are literally, I'll open up the purchase agreement there to check it out. And it's the purchase agreement. It's the disclosures. It's everything in there. You've got to split all those out, DocuSign. They split them out. Command lets you do it too. And command lets you do it too. And that's a, that's another class that she can show you. You got to split them out and put them in the right file folder for that document in compliance. Okay. And I've also seen people, they'll, the whole file, all of them, that's what they'll submit in each one of the files. And it's the same job. And I've got to get, and I'm like, oh my gosh, You're, it's, it's taking me three times the amount of time to look through them all than if it was just all split up. That kind of looks like me, doesn't it? <laughs> Did you take that when I was at my desk? Yeah, like 20 I, think, years I ago? think so. All right. <laughs> okay, so the policy. Um, yeah. Matt, you want to take it away? Yeah, we'll take it. So uh, I don't know, it was several weeks ago, maybe a couple months ago, everybody was emailed to DocuSign the new policy uh, for the compliance, and everybody had to DocuSign and sign it. I think we have a list of some outstanding signatures. It's not many, maybe a handful, literally. Um, just that's acknowledging uh, the policy. So again, you got five days to get the documents into command from the, the date and timestamp of the latest signature that was put on that document. Uh, and again, we can tell when you submitted them, there's a timestamp when you uploaded it in there. So that's, we just compare it to the dates. Uh, it is a three strike. So right now we're in the the... Grace period. The grace period, April 1st, this will actually come into effect where if if I'm in compliance and I notice it's more than five days, if it's five days, that's okay. But if it's six days or more, um, you'll get uh, just a friendly reminder. Hey, reminder, the policy started on the 1st. Um, <laughs> and then uh, you'll have to meet with the broker after you get a friendly reminder. You have to meet with moi. And then the second time, it'll be a semi-friendly reminder and then you'll meet with <laughs> leadership whoever that might be up front of. it could be tina it could be nicole it's gonna be somebody up front probably probably nicole and then the third strike it's it's a not friendly reminder and then they're going to take a hundred dollars from you for every opportunity thereafter that's not that's, that's so once right. you hit three you're done a hundred dollars is coming out every day. every single time so i want i want every this is very important. I like my hundred dollars. I don't want to lose my hundred dollars, okay? And I don't want anybody else to lose their hundred dollars. There are systems in place so you don't have to let that happen. You've got transaction coordinators. You've got virtual assistants. You've got these things do not come in the scheme of things, okay? In the whole scheme of things, they're not that expensive. They're just not. If you think paying two hundred and fifty bucks to have a transaction coordinator manage your whole transaction is a lot of money. Well, have not have it and lose a hundred and then lose a hundred again and then lose a hundred again. 
uh, you'll find not only is the transaction coordinator going to save you your hundred dollars, it's going to give you a lot of time back in your business. And I'm not, I'm not saying this is put in place to make you go do a transaction coordinator. I don't care what you do. I just don't want you to lose your hundred dollars. So figure out what resources are in place at the fingertips. That's going to keep you compliant and put, make, possibly put more time on your plate so you can do other things. Go get more business, work your other job, whatever. Yeah. So this hundred dollars thing. Yeah. Is it only about getting it there within five days? Yes. Or that like an initial or something. Oh no, no it's, it's just the just five, the five days. days. Okay. Yeah. All right. So here's what I don't want happening. See, you brought it up. You let that cat out of the bag. I don't want day four a kid here, and you're like, oh, can you not get my client to sign this? I'm just putting it in there. Right? I'll catch on pretty quick to what's going on if that's happening. Okay? Um, <laughs> sneaky, sneaky, sneaky. Well, that way. I got you. I, I got you. I'm tracking. So, look, like you got five days. I mean, I looked at one today. And it's closing in three days, and they just put everything in today. I'm like, come on, you know. I mean, we're all we're all busy, we're all super busy. And if you're that busy, find a resource to help you with your business. Look at all the businesses we have out here. They all have front people working front desks. They have people. They're leveraging, right? Try it out. I know it's two hundred fifty bucks, two seventy five, two hundred, whatever that price is for that person doing it. Telling you. You will sleep better at night knowing those wheels are running a lot smoother for you and your business. Uh, you'll, you get to a point where you won't even realize you're like, gosh, I, I did I paid what this year? I didn't even know. You won't miss it. I remember, I'm honest, you won't miss it. So you get, again, we have, we have the grace period. begins uh, April 1st. And um, yeah, we just don't want, we're doing six of these meetings. We just don't want people to say, oh, I was surprised. I didn't know. Um, that's why we're doing a sign-in sheet. Because we're going to know who wasn't here. Because those are the people that are going to be losing hundred dollars. Betcha. I would put a hundred dollars on it. And they're going to be losing their hundred yeah. dollars. And, and that money doesn't come to me. You know, it goes, it goes to the market center, and um, it's used as necessary. So, great right. commission. <laughs> that's my part. So. Once you actually get in your compliance, we want you to submit your commission within that same five-day period. Previously, we were telling you that you needed to wait at least, get it in at least a week before closing. Yeah. But right now, we want you to submit them within the same five days. So how do you submit a commission? Oh, yeah, you can have a pen. All right, so submitting your commissions. First thing you're going to do is open up your opportunity. Click on your offers and commissions tab right there next to your documents tab and you're going to click add a new offer which is up there in the corner so after you click on that you're going to see as we go through this you're going to see big red x's in some places i'll explain why they're there um, but you need to fill out a couple things the name of the offer the ratification date the projected closing date I know this says closed to date, but whatever the projected closing date is, and then input the property address at the bottom. The property address is required. If you do not put in the property address, it will not let you move on. So you can just start typing it in here, or if it's a listing, you can hit that select from KWLS button. Okay. So after that, you are going to fill in the name of the other party and the name of their representation. The reason there's a big fat X in here is because the only thing that's required is the name. Okay, you're probably not going to have the information of this person. They're not your client. Don't try and get it. You're not working with them. <laughs> okay, then you're going to fill in the sales price. Now, the sales price is over here. You can't fill in this box. So you have to either put the total amount in the finance or the cash boxes, or you can split it up. So if you know it's a $200,000 house with $180,000 finance and a $20,000 cash down payment, you can fill those things in, but as long as this equals out to whatever is in your purchase agreement, that is what I'm looking for. If it's in, all in cash, if it's all in finance, it doesn't matter at the end. And the reason there's a big fat red X in here is because none of this matters. As far as getting you paid, all I want is to see the sales price. You do not need to fill this out. Creative math is okay. Yes. <laughs> the, the next page, it's 
a pros con and summary list for the were you mad when you were doing it <laughs> <laughs> wanted to make sure everybody could see yes. they need to hit the save button in the corner <laughs> but you don't need to fill out this page either it's not going to stop you if you don't fill out anything just hit the big save button you don't hit the save button if you close out a command your commission is not going to stay there hit save all right so then you'll see your offer pop up all of that BS that we didn't fill out is showing right here, but I want you to hit the accept button once you're done. So this is how you're actually going to open up your commission. So once you hit accept, like with your compliance documents, you'll see the status of the commission is now open. In order to change your commission and submit your commission, you need to hit manage commission because just like with the document compliance, if you're not submitting it, we don't see it. Madison does not see it. So when you hit manage commission, you'll have your breakdowns, your summary, and all kinds of other stuff on this page. But if you know that this is good to go, you can just hit that big shiny green submit. Now, if you need to change anything about your commission, you have your edit agent payment in the corner. Edit agent payment allows you to add things like referrals inside and outside, inside being somebody within our brokerage, outside being somebody outside of our brokerage. Remember, Lynchburg is not our brokerage. They are a separate brokerage. So if you're working with somebody in the Lynchburg office, it is an outside referral. And then if you have like a Rainmaker or you're splitting your commission with somebody, you may have the add another agent button up here. Okay. And we can talk more about the logistics of doing a split and all that stuff separately but for right now all I want you guys to know is that you have to hit that shiny green submit you hit that shiny green submit and something goes haywire that shiny green submit will turn into a red request termination button so if something goes haywire the deal falls through something isn't fixable or something is fixable you just need to submit a new commission just hit the request termination button and go through that whole process again and put in a new commission request all right and then this is the same policy as the compliance documents. You have to submit within five days and that same three strike penalty applies. All right, so the reasoning on the commissioning, the reason why that is important that it's put in early. So region, Keller Williams region, is always asking the market centers for their projected numbers moving forward for the month ahead, the two months ahead. They do that for a lot of reasons, whatever regional does with those numbers. But it also helps the market center for forward budgeting, events, things we're doing, uh, you know, whatever. Yeah, yeah, whatever the case is, we have to have that for budgeting. They know the number can change, some fall through, some, you know, you, you may have received a text from Madison, hey, are you still going to be closing next week on a certain property. Have you ever seen that text? You may, because if there's some that have, you know, Madison's doing the books, she's doing whatever, she may be wanting to make sure those are still on track. So she's reporting the right number for the end of that uh, particular week. That's the, the reasoning, the, the foundational reasoning for putting that compliance in that early or putting the commissions in that early. It's very, very, very important for, uh, for budgeting and numbers we submit the regional which they submit to hire. You know, it ends up going on Carrie's desk, I guess, at some point. I don't know. Maybe. So so if the commission you submitted and then you then you say, you know, I'm gonna use a transaction coordinator. So you'd have to cancel that and redo it so, so that you can edit add it. edit the Yeah. So there's can't. a couple things that you can call Madison about. So before you hit the request termination, if it's something like that, very small. Um, you know, the whole deal hasn't fallen through. You just need to add $250, $300 for a transaction coordinator. Call Madison first before you hit the request termination button and say, hey, I forgot I'm using a, a transaction coordinator. I forgot to put their fee on there. Is it, can you go in and change it? Because more than likely she can, or she can make a note on it so that when she does go to pay it out, she can take that fee out. So don't jump the gun on the request termination button if it's something small. But if the whole deal falls through and you get it under contract with a new person, then you want to do a whole new commission. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. So that's it for that slide. Any questions? Any questions about the slides? About the information on the slides? And I can send this to you guys with the yeah. screenshots. I also have videos on how to submit your commissions and your documents and opportunities if you need that. So yeah. there's walkthrough videos that I can send you if you need help. Okay.
Anybody online? Anybody on Zoom? Hi, Michelle. Michelle. Do you have any questions? No? No <laughs> questions? Okay. We're okay. going to log off here then, Michelle. Thank you. Who else is there? Uh, Mike popped off. <laughs> okay.